And we're live with Nako. How are you today? I'm good, Sonny. How are you? Ah, it's nice to reconnect. Uh, I'm I'm doing well. It's been uh, been a good it's been a good you know holiday season. Uh, definitely no complaints. Uh, so yeah. So thanks for uh, thanks for joining me today, and you know being on Bitcoin Stories as I'm calling it. <laughs> um, so how about yourself? How's your how's your holiday shaping up? It's great. I mean this market like talk about a christmas present right <laughs> yeah <laughs> happy camper happy camper of course okay so uh so Neko, i usually start with um uh kind of like where we first met um do you remember where we first met i'm trying to remember it was probably at one of the bitcoin events in toronto right yeah you're a star so i don't think you remember me i mean i was in a sea of people right so it was a a Bitcoin meetup. I've seen you host a number of them. And I'm, I'm kind of a lurker, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> I tend not to really go up to people. I tend not to, I, I didn't uh, in, initially um, even talk uh, or, or, or participate on Twitter. You know, I would just literally just read stuff. And I, I felt like I didn't understand it enough when I, when I first got in. So I got mm. in, in 2016. That's mm. when I really started to pay attention was Mike Hearn's Rage Quit. I actually remember when, <laughs> yeah, that was my entry. And um, and I think I had mentioned this before too, like I got in because somebody had offered to pay me in Bitcoin. Mm. So for me, it was just complete fluke. I'm a recruiter. I mean, mm. what would I be? Why would I be in crypto, right? Mm. I'm an engineer, not a finance person. So I, I got in serendipitously, serendipitally and, um, and, and yeah, so I, I, you know, we, we are now meeting virtually, but I sort of just watched you from afar. Right. You know? <laughs> so, wow. So four years, I'd say that's like OG status now, right? I mean, 20, 2016 sounds yeah. like not too long ago, but that, that four or five years, that's, that's, that's that eternity in, in Bitcoin time. It um, is. And I do feel like an OG because I remember the SegWit wars and I there you go. Work, like what was SegWit? What was the fight about? I mm. you know, joined the user activated soft fork. Mm -hmm. you know? I have my hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I'm an OG in that respect. So, yeah. Nice, nice. So, I'm, I'm really excited uh, to kind of dig in. And so, I, I don't know if you had a chance to see any other. So, I'm on episode number. I think this will be 56. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm gunning towards 60. That's my, that's my, my first milestone. So, um, and so the kind of the theme has been to try and really capture people's stories, um, A, before learning about Bitcoin and then B, kind of after learning about Bitcoin. And, you know, whereas most like podcasts are like, well, give me your 30 second, uh, you know, backstory and then let's get to the all time highs. This is the opposite where, I mean, I'm excited about the all time highs, but when you're in Bitcoin for so long, you know what I mean? All time highs, just another day. Uh, and, and there's just so much more, I guess. I, and, and by the way, I'm being a bit, you know, cheeky right now. Like I care that, that, you know, that we're hitting all time highs, but I think, uh, but I, 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 but I don't, but if we didn't hit the all time highs, I would still be doing Bitcoin. And when Bitcoin dropped 70%, I was just as excited about Bitcoin. So, uh, so what my kind of show is shaping up to be is really a highlight on people who have figured out how to be full time, how they have essentially built something on top of Bitcoin, whether it be a business or whatever, and uh, and have somehow, you know, filled out and, and there's like this like vibrant kind of ecosystem with, you know, with people. So I want to capture those stories. And uh, and so when you and I chatted last week or whenever it was, I was just like, oh, wow, this would be this would be interesting. Let's let's maybe do this. So, so, so let's maybe take it back. Um, some people start with their parents meeting. Some people start with where, where they were born. Some people start with their first job. Uh, it doesn't matter wherever you want. Uh, what, but yeah, what's your background story look like? So I have been recruiting now for six years and um, I specialize in fintech recruiting. So what's interesting is that I guess you can say crypto is a subcategory of fintech, right? It's just much more, it's disrupting the disruptors. That's what I tell people. So I was actually working with people disrupting finance and then, you know, along comes Bitcoin, right? It's like, whoa. Um, so yeah, my backstory is I was actually recruiting and mm. most recruiters, we don't go to school for recruiting. Recruiting, again, is something you fall into. 
Mm. So I actually, um, before that I was selling IT solutions. Got you. And you said you're an engineer. What did you study? No, no, I, I studied or, political science. Oh, so sorry. I'm, you were re- doing recruiting for engineering companies. Yeah. Is that what you said? Okay. Got you. Got you. Got you. Oh, was, interesting. So you studied well, political science. Cool. Yeah. Where's that here in, in Toronto or? In Concord- at Concordia. Oh, yeah, cool. so yeah, so in Montreal, it's funny because your your alma mater is University of Alberta, and that's my dad's alma mater. So my dad, that's how come I was born in Canada. I call myself an accidental Canadian. So my my father cool. studied at U of A, University of Alberta, and I was born in Edmonton. No way! Which hospital? Ah, uh, I don't remember. I left when I was two. two okay, years okay. Old. I don't remember, okay. but I can ask. I can ask. My was mom. it Royal Alexander? I know it was close to Castle Down. I think. Okay. Okay. Cool. Because I was born in Edmonton, right? <clears throat> Were you really? Yeah. 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 That's home. That's where my parents live. How crazy is that? Like, mm-hmm. I, mean, I never meet people from Edmonton. I just don't. I, I know. I, <laughs> that's I, why I had to ask. <laughs> yeah, I meet people from Calgary, but I don't meet people from Edmonton. Right. Am I saying cool. the neighborhood right? Is Castle Down a neighborhood? Or sounds like. Sounds right. I've heard yeah. of it before. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so interesting because cool. So your dad's from uh, from Edmonton, or sorry, he had spent time there, and you were born yeah. there. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's from Tanzania, East Africa. So mm-hmm. anyway, um, what was I gonna say? Your story. So I, I yeah. So I was just a salesperson, you know, selling IT years back, and um, and my company moved back to Montreal because I was living in Montreal mm. back to Toronto because Toronto's home this is where I'm from or or not from but where you grew up, up and yeah, yeah yeah I got you and um and the recruiter who placed me just said to me you know I think you'd be a good recruiter so that's how I got into recruiting as a mm. backstory cool interesting okay so I fall into things like just by fluke I <laughs> just kind of mm. end up in places <clears throat> and so Bitcoin was similar to that mm. yeah. Where, you know, one of my clients said, hey, would you accept this thing called Bitcoin? And I said, yeah, sure. If I can convert it, because I needed to know, is it real money? Because what I'd heard about Bitcoin is drug Mm. dealers, you know, just bad people did Bitcoin. But I'm like, if I can convert it to money, Mm. that's cool. Of course, you know, retrospect, like, damn, I wish I hadn't converted the amount that he gave me. But I did. (laughs) Whatever. It is what it is. But it piqued my curiosity because... I had to learn how to accept it. I had to learn how to set up a wallet. I had to learn how to, you know, um, how to register at a, 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 um, a an exchange and all of that, which was Quadrica back in the day that went under or, well, not went under, but whatever the story is. You can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So Super I was, sad story. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, right? So, so anyway, so I registered with Quadrica, figured out how to set up a wallet. And, and what I tell people is if I can figure this out, so can you. Mm. Like I'm not a technical person. I'm a recruiter. So, but it takes time, right? It's not something that you wake up and you're like, oh, I get this, or I know how to do this or thing. It takes time. Uh, it's a, it, it took me maybe a little shorter than the average person because mm. I realized that there was an opportunity to work for companies who needed recruiting and I would accept Bitcoin. That was my, that was my, uh, I guess my, what do you call it? Strategic uh, offering. Right? Offering. Got it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. It's like, Hey, I accept Bitcoin. So if you need engineers, I'm already recruiting engineers. So you can pay me Bitcoin. I'll invoice you. You can pay me. And that still happens to happens today. I work with Bitcoin companies and they pay me a Bitcoin. Cool. Right? yeah it is so cool. what kind of are you able to name any of the companies you work with in the past um, or can, are they more yeah. secret i mean i can i get respect if they are yeah, i mean i can maybe i can name a few um so i have worked with casa their casa woo, woo. sorry i got super excited i love jameson yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait yeah. wait casa is in like the hardware wallet before i mean yeah, sorry not yeah, hardware wallet the multi-sig uh the multi-sig guys. okay sweet sorry yeah i got way too excited there but yeah okay carry on yeah. <laughs> pretty cool um i worked with exodus mm, so, another big player cool another wallet um mm-hmm. i worked with um i don't know if i can say this there's 
there's a stable coin that I worked with. I don't think I can name say it. it. Say no, I'm kidding. I don't want to get you in trouble. But continue, continue. Okay, okay. Um, and um, who else have I, am I working with? I'm working with Lightning Network. Nice, man. So yeah. you've 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 got like some really cool uh, customers. Yeah, I do. I do. And and yeah, their hearts in the right place. And and so I really love working with these clients. And um, cool. Yeah. So, so anyway, so, but it took me time. It was like bit by bit, chunk by chunk, biting off pieces of information. I did. So what was your first exposure to Bitcoin? You said it was from one of your, your clients. They came to you and just asked you about it. Yes. I, they're not even in business anymore or, or, you know, they spun off. I but what was it? I'm just curious. What was it about kind of Bitcoin that caught your you know interest or fancy? Do you even remember? Um, I think what interested me is because I've traveled a lot and it made sense to me that this was a global currency. Like that just, mm. it made sense. I was like, oh my God, if I was in Africa, I could literally go and tr- cross the border and not declare it. Like bingo, like <laughs> that just that blew my mind, right? Like I mm. can cross borders and just have the keywords, the C words in my head, like I could memorize them. So that was just, that was, that was the key. Um, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So it made sense. I was Mm. like, this is, this is something that people need, you know? Mm. Um, So, yeah. So that was my, that was my, that was the hook for me. I guess everyone has the hook. That was the hook for me. And then I started listening to different podcasts and I started, you know, following people on Twitter and, you know, started I'm just curious, at- what, what was your relationship with just money, money in general, like prior to Bitcoin? Like, did you even think about it? Was it just eh, something no, that you had never, to go out and never yeah, really never thought, thought, about about never <laughs> thought about it? And also what's really interesting, mm. I realized that my relationship with money was very childish, was very paternalistic. Like, like I put my money in the bank and they'll take care of it for me, mm. right? And I have a financial advisor who knows better than me and will take (laughs) care of it for me. Mm. Like I never explored what money really meant. I was the kind of person that um, I just, uh, other people knew more about money than me and, and I trusted them with my money. So psychologically, and that's, I'm so glad you brought that up because psychologically it took a while for me to, to, um, take responsibility right like I was like holy crap if I lose my private keys I am screwed like that freaked me out and I had to psychologically kind of prepare myself and it took a while right for me to realize okay with so much freedom comes so much responsibility (laughs) like that like that spider-man quote you know like a lot of of freedom comes responsibility so I really so that took a while that took that took probably from, cause Mike Hearn rage quit. And then uh, I got, I accepted Bitcoin. And then I really got into it at the end of 2016. So it took me like almost a year to really mm. psychologically prepare myself to, okay, I'm gonna accept this. I'm gonna have to store it myself. And I have to be responsible. I'm mean, gonna have to learn about money, like what it means. And I'm gonna have to take control of my own destiny, my own financial destiny. So I've always been a bit of a, uh, you know, free spirit, uh, kind of um, attracted to intellectually curious. I've always been uh, independent, but my finances were, you know, I was just childish. <laughs> so, you know, that's the best word I can think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so and then and then so you get intrigued by this. So I, I do find that that's one of the common kind of like uh, threads is or it tends to be at least a lot of people who are into Bitcoin, at least that I've met, um, tend to be, you know, um, people who have like traveled somewhat and, or, you know, or from our different, from, lived in different parts of the world. And, and it's interesting because like, I guess like if you, you know, money is one of those things. It's like, it's like, it's like a fish in water. You know what I mean? Like, 
you don't really know it's there. It's like, it's kind of just everywhere. Um, but then when you like get in a plane, you go elsewhere and you're like, wait, hold on. These pieces of paper, they have different faces on them. And you start drawing like the connections between, you know, anyways. anyways okay. So what, what happens next? So I guess, okay, so that's very interesting. So you're, you're like, you see, so you've got your recruiter kind of history. You're getting intrigued by Bitcoin. And how do you, I guess, like, you know, kind of, make that switch and, 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 and turn it into a bit of a career is where you're, so you, so you just started accepting Bitcoin. That was your first step. Yeah. Yeah. That was my Interesting. First Interesting. And then what happened after that? <laughs> yeah, I started, and then I started also accepting other altcoins because then Ethereum came on the scene and I remember mm. a developer <clears throat> saying to mm. me, there's this thing called Ethereum and he was participating in the ICO and it was 33 cents. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I didn't know how to participate, but he's like, yeah, you need Bitcoin. And I was like, oh, you know, I just ignored him because I didn't understand it. I didn't know how to participate. Um, and I remember people talking about it and there was a buzz, but this Ethereum thing. And this dude was from Toronto. He's like, hey, he's actually from your city, you know? And um, I was like, okay, whatever. And then Ethereum blew up. And I was like, damn, you know, if I had gotten in, right? And it was $11 when I found, uh, an IC there was an ICO team. And I was like, hey, you know what? I'll accept Ethereum. Like, what the hell, whatever. Mm. And they're like, really? And I said, yeah, but at, at a premium, of course. So, you know, I charged them a little additional. Mm. And I got a ton of Ethereum. And I thought, okay, I'm going to hold this. Mm. It hits a hundred dollars because I'm gonna be a friggin' genius. I'm gonna sell it, you know, because that was my hit point. That was my mm. the point because it was 10xing my money, which I thought like how it's ridiculous, yeah. Ridiculous, right? It hits a hundred dollars. Of course, I, I sell, I sell it all because I'm thinking like I'm a genius. Hello. <laughs> and uh, and then Ethereum just kept going, and I'm just mm. like, oh my god, like what is going on who are these people <laughs> who, who are these people <laughs> well you know because you were going in the meetups like vitalik and all those guys were literally but, at the meetups but, but I or like people like that I, but i didn't i didn't realize mm. that it would keep going up and that it would be what it is today i mean because mm. no it went up to like a thousand bucks or something like it was crazy right it just kept going and um so another regret, I was like, oh, damn it, I shouldn't have convert. But it, what, it is what it is. Like mm -hmm. nobody had a crystal ball, you know, and, and the people I know that did hold, most of them were developers who were working for Ethereum. So, mm. like, you know, in retrospect, I talked to people and they're like, trust me, nobody who wasn't making it, like making or earning Ethereum actually held. Like everyone sold at a hundred because it was like, why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Yeah, you kind of can't, uh, you know, I mean, you can, but it's kind of hard to like always, you know, think that way because like, because you, you won't sleep at night. <laughs> hard, right? Hard. And same with Bitcoin. I think a lot of people who had sold at a certain point, mm -hmm. right? The people who didn't were actually working in Bitcoin as opposed to just ho hobbling Bitcoin. It's super mm -hmm. hard. You just mm. don't have that foresight. Nobody does, you know? So anyway, so um, uh, what was I saying? So yeah, so that's when this whole space just, I fell down the rabbit hole. But Bitcoin's my first love. It's the one I have the most of, but I'm not a maximalist. I call myself a maximalish. So <laughs> I've, got, <laughs> I've got the majority of my 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 portfolio is Bitcoin. But I, I, I have other altcoins. that I Maximalish.com? Oh, I don't have that. I should. Right? Have. It's gone. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Or, or get it before this 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 video goes live in a couple of days. So, <laughs> okay. So interesting. Um. Okay. So you 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 uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, both of them come into your life, changes your life. You're attending meetups. You're learning, and then what? And then now you're accepting Bitcoin. And how do you land all these like big like reputable customers? I'm curious. I'm sure people will be curious. Was curious to know. Like yeah, is it through uh, serendipity, it, just being at the right place, right time, like hustle? Like, like, I think there's some word of mouth. I think there's mm. some word of mouth. Um, referrals, you know, and and just yeah, it's it's a pretty small ecosystem. Mm. So people tend to like if you're in it long enough, people would have heard of you or know somebody who knows you or 
or or or something like that, right? Yeah, so yeah. a lot of hey, Nako, it's not possible to point the phone a little bit lower, is it? Because like your face is kind of in the bottom half. Like, is it oh. is it possible to? Yeah, there you are. Okay, cool. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Uh, okay, so so uh, so actually, you know, one question I have is also like as this sorry as this bull run strikes, right? You know, Bitcoin companies are hiring, are are you know trying to. Um, yeah, bring new talent on board. So I guess just any advice for them, like any, any, just generally speaking, you know, I mean, obviously reaching out to you would be probably smart, but, uh, but other than that, before, before they even maybe do that, are they, are there things that you, you advise people, I don't know, think about or. Sir, sure. I can tell you the stack that a lot of people are looking for. If you're an engineer, so if you're a software engineer, common stack is JavaScript. This is on the application layer. So there are people building apps for, you know, within the ecosystem and they're usually using JavaScript, React on the front end, Node on the back end, um, things like GraphQL, uh, MongoDB, um, SQL, um, uh, what else? Um, I'm just trying to think of what, okay. So that, that's one stack. There, there are people who are also looking for Python developers, C++, um, for, the, for, for people you know, really working with the, with the protocol, right, on the protocol layer. So it depends on where you are in the stack, but you've got people that are um, you know, infrastructure engineers, you've got people who are looking for um, people who understand smart contracts. We call them DAP, DAP developers, which means decentralized applications. So if you know Solidity, um, you know, that that's that's very in, in demand uh, right now. Uh, Solidity How much does the Solidity engineer go for? I mean, I've heard ridiculous numbers. Like, it depends. It depends. I guess it depends on. Hmm. Yeah, because it's equity. <clears throat> it's most of most of these opportunities hmm. are equity plays, right? So, so equity or token or both or it's it's token it's mostly tokens so it's mm. like 180,000 uh the last dap developer i placed was made 180,000 uh base salary plus canadian equity. or usd or us us and that's uh that's in like paid in bitcoin or, or ethereum or something and then the rest is kind of in equity you said or something it's or- in equity yeah. So oh, all a, of that is in equity, or all, all no, of that no, is in- no, no. The the one eighty is cash, like cash, um, US. Mm. And you can convert it. It depends into on whatever you want. you want. Okay, got it. Like normal, like normal money. <laughs> yeah. So uh-huh. so so one eighty base salary plus equity uh, is and 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 that's for really senior people. Like you've got to be senior mm. to command that, and you've got to be a rock star, quote unquote. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, and they want to see proof, right? So you've got to have uh, a really active GitHub. You've got to have contributed to projects and have created smart contracts. Excuse me, smart contracts on projects that have done well or have, or pop, or are pop popular. So any any sort of um, project that's kind of well known in the ecosystem uh, for people that are starting out. Let's say you've got two years solidity. Although I should say two years, like a year, let's say a year, because solid, solidity hasn't been around that long, you know. So if you've got a year, it's maybe starting at a hundred thousand between a hundred and one hundred twenty thousand. If you're a junior developer, the senior developers can, can kind of command quite a bit. Um, mm. so they want In- they want people who are passionate. You you it can't be about the money at this mm. point. There's just so much at stake, right? You gotta eat, eat, breathe, and sleep <laughs> the, the the space. And now with uh, with like kind of the COVID era and all that, like, uh, are you seeing some like big? Because I mean, like you talked about how we all met at conferences, and you know that was at least where a bit of the networking happened, I assume. But now in this new world, how how are people? Um, I guess are people just leaning more on like online resources? I assume. Virtual, virtual mm. conferences, consensus, the biggest that mm. there is in our eco, in our space is having a virtual summit this year, right? It's in May. Mm. And I think their early bird tickets just sold out. Like, Have you summer. been attending a lot of these virtual conferences? Like, how are they? I'm a little bit skeptical. Like I, what, like I'm an avatar and I mean, I don't know. I mean, I really value, you know, like events cause I just love people, <laughs> but it's like, 
<laughs> I mean, I could just talk to these people like directly if I want. Like, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm a little bit, I mean, I shouldn't be because I'm like, you know, I like engineering and technology and I should be all over this. Like, I don't know. I just, uh, I worry a little bit about, <laughs> you know, some of these like these new venues. But I mean, you, I guess desperate times call for desperate measures, right? Like what else are you going to do? <laughs> desperate times calls for desperate measures. And the good thing is, is that there are people who can't make the conferences if it's mm. virtual, you can you can make it right. So good point, yeah. I guess yeah. it's more inclusive, right? Because now all you need is a phone. Mm. Yes. Interesting. Much, so attendance should much, be much higher or something, right? Yeah, attendance is higher. I've actually been quite impressed with some really. Of the yeah, and they're using the technology in a really clever way. So mm. NFTs um, have been used at some of these conferences for swag bags and for sending. Yeah, for, for sending like prizes and things like that, that you would normally get it, get it shows, but they're using NFTs and, and it works. Like I've had things delivered through the, these NFT tokens that I redeem that are sent to me by the conference. So some pretty cool stuff, you know. Interesting. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I guess well, I guess just curious. So, what does your story then look like with whole? So, this whole, you know, by the way, is there like a name of your recruiting agency? Or is it like a Fintech, website? FinTech Recruiters, as cool. in financial technology recruiters. Yeah, 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 and and then what percentage of your, I guess, business is mostly like on in the Bitcoin crypto space? Is it? Oh, good question. Um, I'd say probably fifty-five percent <laughs> crypto. <laughs> Yeah, mm. so it's majority, but I still have, you know, I still work with like neo banks and and and, so, and and then you, so you gave some like a great advice in terms of more like technically speaking and also ranges and all that, but like um, like. <sighs> you know, not all companies can even, or like, what should a company be thinking about? Like, especially Bitcoin startups, if you're like, let's say a founder or CEO out there, because there's a lot of them out there and more and more coming in. And then really, like I said, is I'm trying to focus on giving them, you know, like tools, if you will, like kind of op like ways to, you know, do more with less. And so if you were them, I guess, what would you be doing? It, it, you know, it, because I mean, like you said, it's it's the competition is fierce. You have to find somebody that not only you have to pay them well, but you have to like, they have to be part of like, they have to be part of the mission and they have to really get the vision. And, um, but like, where do people go? Is it, I mean, I, I guess there's like a more tactical thing. Is it AngelList, LinkedIn, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like those are kind of like the obvious places that people would need to think about. But then besides that, like, how do you? I think the best place is GitHub. If you're looking for engineers. Interesting. You yeah, Interesting. you want people who yeah, believe that makes sense. the source, right? Mm. Are contributing, even though they're mm. not working in the space. Mm. Those are the best. And and sometimes you'll find people actually contributing to your, 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 uh, your project. And so if you Man. see a pull request, mm. you might want to reach out to that person and say, hey, yeah, that's what I do as a recruiter. I find my best people on GitHub. Um, and, and, and they're actually quite surprised because as a recruiter, they're like, you know about my pet project, you know, because I'll look up what people are doing. I'll look up. Oh, yeah. I'll look it up. How do you know if someone's good or not? I don't. That's the only thing. That's something that the engineers have to judge. I can't judge that. But, but what I found, there is a direct correlation between people, in my opinion, as a recruiter, people who write well and people who code well, like if, cause coding is a lot, has a lot to do with how you think, right? It's your thought process. And I mm. find that people who write really clearly and succinctly mm. tend to be really good coders. So mm. I tend to like, I love coders who blog. Cause I'm like, yeah, this guy's like, I could, and, and it also documentation. Like I'll look in the documentation folders and see how they've documented things. And if I can understand it, <laughs> I kind of know a little bit more than the average recruiter. And that's because I just love the space so much that right. I to participate. And so, you know, I've actually, you know, set up things in such a way that like, I know how to, uh, on my Mac, I know how to run homebrew. I know how to, to ha like what dependencies are I know how to install dependencies. So I know how to read enough of the code to understand it. And there's some people who I can actually look at their documentation and I can understand it. I'm like, okay, this person's really good. Cause if I can understand it and I'm not, and I, you know, I'm not a coder, but I can interpret, okay, 
I need dependencies. I need to install you know, mm. or whatever. <laughs> so I kind of understand all of that and I can, mm. I can kind of judge it. Now, I'm not good enough to like do the selecting for you, but I'm good enough to kind of look at somebody and think, okay, you know what? This is a, this is a good candidate. It cool. took me a long time to get to this stage. Like, I love that though. Wow. That's that, that's very insightful. And I think very helpful, at least uh, yeah. for me, it was. And so I'm sure other people find it. We just mic drop there and just bring this show to an end, but no, I'm kidding. Okay. So what happens after that? How do you, uh, okay. So, so um, yeah. Write, huh? write, they write well. They, they write, write well. If they write well, it means they're thinking clearly and they're, mm -hmm. and they're able to express themselves and code is just expression right so if they're able to do that and and i'm also sometimes surprised like i'll read somebody's documentation and i'll speak to them and english is in their first language i'm like whoa like like you wrote this really well and english is not your mother to, like so that's when i'm like this guy is a really good coder because you know maybe chinese mandarin is his first language but he he his his english his written english is is much better than like anglophone english like people who speak english as their mother tongue you know he, he, he his documentation is much better so things like that to look for cool interesting 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 very very fascinating um no i am curious in terms of like your story so then uh oh yeah what any, anything else in terms of so after you get in you learn about bitcoin you start your you pivot your business a bit now you're doing, you know, 55%, but between then and now, I'm just wondering, were there some other, you know, things or like that you had to kind of like hurdles, if you will? I mean, that seems like a, quite an accomplishment. To, like, I, mean, I think Jack Dorsey's an investor in Lightning, right? And um, uh, Casa is like, you know, super legit. And I, I think doing God's work. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. And so, um, so just curious, like, yeah, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what did your journey look like? Like, how did you even do that? Yeah. So my journey has been, I think it's just passion. Mm. And I think that you naturally attract people who are also passionate. So it helped that I, oh, I have a Casanode. Like I was one of those people bought a Casanode. Um, I actually had downloaded the Bitcoin core software on a QT wallet. So I also learned like how to set that up how to go into like my config files, how to back up my, you know, my seed phrase and all that other fun mm -hmm. stuff that we technical people are terrified of. Uh, but I, 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 I got comfortable with that. And then when I saw that the cast and node, they introduced a node, I was like, oh, this is for me. This is for people like me, right? Like non-technical people. So I bought it and I set it up. And I also, when lightning came out, I decided I wanted to experiment. You know, I want to be reckless <laughs> with some, some Satoshis. And I decided to set up a lightning node and try and figure out like, how does this work? Cause I see it as the future mm. and I try to understand, <clears throat> uh, understand it and it's difficult. I still don't fully understand lightning. Um, channel management is, is a challenge, but they'll, you know, I think that as time goes on, new things will come out. I just saw a tweet today, uh, Jack Mahler's, uh, that, that's who I'd like to get as a client, as <laughs> my next target is Strike. He, he came out with Strike and the tweet was that, was who's that football player? Russell, Russell, you know, that football I, player. I, I, saw the, I saw the news, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a big Bitcoiner. Oh, He's who's a the Strike guy? I, I was gonna say. Is Jack? Jack you know, he's like, a no, what is, what have they done? Like, what are they, I, I mean, I was looking yeah, at them this yeah, morning. What, yeah. So what they're doing is they're allowing organizations to pay people in Bitcoin directly through their bank. So I think it's like, it's like, directly. Oh, it's kind of like BitWage. No. BitWage, <clears throat> I don't think uses the bank. I think what makes strike a little different, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Mm. This is how I'm interpreting it they are actually connected to your bank account. So you know how you've got like direct deposit from your bank? Mm. I don't know if BitPay is connected to your bank account. Is it? Okay, okay. <laughs> BitWage? I'm not, I'm not going to, anyway, so, but, but okay, so that's fascinating. So what you're saying though is, is that this football player took 50% of his income in Bitcoin, yes. right? Was that the big well, news? Or I think he's getting paid like 100%. He's so does that part, become part of your like 
I guess like it probably definitely is right. Like your conversation, because I know a lot of companies pay their employees in Bitcoin or have that option. Yeah. Is that becoming something that comes up more and more? Like are people like, Hey, I would, you know, does this company pay me or whatever? Can I just get directly paid in Bitcoin? Well, here, here's the thing. There, there are some companies who, who do that, but you'd be surprised. There are a lot of companies in the ecosystem, the companies that you would think would pay like, like Kraken, for example, right? I think now they're, they're paying a percentage, but before they were like 100% fiat. They didn't pay people in Bitcoin. For a while, for a while, they didn't pay people in Bitcoin. And then I think they paid like 20% or you could have a portion of your paycheck. There weren't a lot of companies that paid Bitcoin. Uh, Exodus pays people like 100% Bitcoin. Mm. I don't know if that's changed. Hey, Nako, I don't know if you know, but I, I actually... Uh, um... I actually worked for Kraken last year. I was their head of global business development. And so I can definitely confirm that they, they pay people in Bitcoin and they have 100%. like, uh, yeah, it's up to you actually. They have oh, a really? very interesting yeah, awesome. system where you can do so, but uh, it's uh, no, no, no. And, and yeah, anyways, but, but maybe in the past or something, maybe they didn't, I'm not exactly sure way back in the day, but, uh, but yeah, it's uh, um, okay. So, so interesting. So, Okay, what else? Uh, so the, I guess the, we talked a little bit about your story. The, you know that my second question is really around like your company story, which we've already kind of dovetailed into. But anything else you want to kind of share about, I don't know, I guess, I mean, I find it fascinating. Like, because, you know, like as an entrepreneur myself, um, like recruiting is literally like the lifeblood of your business, yeah. like the type and the quality and it's the people hard. you bring into your company. And it's so hard because it's competitive and, you know, people have concerns about our industry and, you know, rightfully so. Um, and so it's, 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 it's art and, you know, and science. And, but to hear that there's a recruiter like you, who's like <laughs> setting up Casa, you know, um, you know, setting up lightning nodes, stuff like that. That is, um, I'm sure really exciting. <laughs> um, cool. Um, okay. So, but anything else you want to share on, on that front or I don't know, Along the lines of, you know, fintech recruiters, I guess, is, is that, is it fintech recruiters.com or .ca? Yes, fintech, fintech recruiters.com. What a nice domain too. <laughs> I, I, I get luck. Like I, I do. Hey, by the way, I used to call my events at one point fintech Canada. I think they're still called fintech Canada. The website's actually fintech Canada. Do you remember that? No. I no. Don't. Okay. Okay. I, I did that. I did, I did it intentionally because I wanted people like you to come to my events, like people who are into FinTech, but we're kind of like not sure about Bitcoin. I'm like, bring all those people. And then I'd literally line it up with 98%, like, you know, Max Kaisers of the world, <laughs> Tone Vase. <laughs> oh, oh man. Okay, okay. Anyways, so and yeah, I was gonna ask you, anything else you wanna share on on the, uh, either your story or kind of the, uh, yeah, FinTech recruiter side? I, I definitely want to let people know, I think as a recruiter, it's better to recruit people who have the same values. Mm. So I think value-based recruiting is much more important than skills because especially in our industry, right? Crypto is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Bitcoin is not for the faint of heart. You need people who actually believe in what they're doing. And if you're just hiring based on skill level, what you're going to find is that when the going gets tough, people are going to quit. Mm. Right? And they're like, yo, I'm out. <laughs> like, I can't do this. This is crazy. You, you're all crazy. <laughs> so you need, you need to recruit crazy people like yourself. Because <laughs> you do need a little bit of crazy, right? There's like this space is just, and I think, you know, right now, regulatory wise, we're, 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 we're not like people how can I say this? I don't think we're facing the pressure that we might face in the future. Like when, mm. you know, cause right now you've got um, like mass mutual, you've got some old school, like hardcore players, financial players who are looking at Bitcoin. And I think that the politicians are, you know, they're not paying that much attention. They are, but they're not, you know, but once they realize like, holy crap, <laughs> There's gonna there's gonna be a, a point where where we become um, a bigger threat than they ever imagined, right? Like it's it's it, yeah. They, 
and I don't think we are there yet. I think we're still kind of seen as, you know, we're 500 billion market cap. We're not a trillion yet. I think once we hit the trillion mark, there's going to be a lot of pressure on all companies in this space. Like the government is going to come after us, I believe, and not necessarily to get rid of us, but to tax every single dime that goes through your business. Like, mm. like you are going to be taxed. And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people in our space, um, we just, uh, we're taking that for granted that, that, that that's not going to happen because I think it's going to, it's going to come. And so you need employees who are going to be there for you. Like they're not going to abandon ship. Right. Um, they're, they're going to realize like, like we're changing the world, which I believe we are. Um, and, and, and we're in the front lines and we're, you know. Yeah. I think that's great advice. I was going to say is, is that, I agree. Um, I, I, I do think that, you know, Bitcoin is not <laughs> the tool to evade taxation. And I think a lot of people kind of uh, um, sometimes suggest that. And, and I think it's dangerous mainly because, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, KYC is already being done. There are companies like obviously like chain analysis that exist that have the ability to traverse the blockchain and identify and, and privacy. Unfortunately, I mean, I, I wish it existed more so in Bitcoin, but it, it doesn't. And so if your goal is to try and get away from the tax man, they're going to find you eventually and you're getting trouble. And I don't want to advocate for anything that would get people in trouble. Um, and, but, but I do think, and in fact, just in India yesterday, uh, news came out saying how they wanted to apply some sort of tax and, you know, the news kind of comes here and there and, and you know, in Canada too, like, I think it's pretty clear if you go to even the Canada.ca website, they tell you that, you know, if you're making capital gains and you're liquidating, da, 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 you got to pay taxes on, um, on your Bitcoin. I, I think the interesting thing though, like for me, what happened a long time ago is because of similar experiences to what you shared about like, you know, how Ethereum went to hundred and, you know, for me, it's more along the lines of Bitcoin, but because that's happened so many times, I've now literally had a flip in my thinking where I consider Bitcoin as money. And it's like, that's, it's kind of like a one-way street. You know what I mean? Like it, money goes in there and it doesn't come out because <laughs> it doesn't, uh, because like, it, because that's when problems happen. Like when you cash it back to fiat, you're like, you get taxed. That's when, you know, Bitcoin takes away from you and oh, I did another 10 X. It's like, ah, so it's better to just, you know, just to deal with the volatility, keep enough, you know, fiat. I, I consider fiat as like my emergency fund. You know, you got to keep enough money in the bank mm -hmm. to pay your bills, you know, for the next mm -hmm. couple months or whatever year, maybe. But beyond that, it's all Bitcoin, right? Um, okay, so I was gonna say, so so okay, so very fascinating. By the way, I think we've we've covered a, a lot. I wasn't really sure because like we hadn't really spoken a lot, so I wasn't sure where this interview was gonna go. But this is actually turning out to be, I, I think, super interesting and valuable, which are my two goals. Uh, okay, um, my third question and kind of my, you know, I don't know, final American gladiator esque question uh, is, what what is one thing that you believe to be true? Uh, that most others in Bitcoin would disagree with you on. So what is one thing that you believe to be true that most others in, in Bitcoin would disagree with you on? That's a great question. I, I'm actually, funny enough, Bitcoin is known for its libertarian views, right? So very right of center. Um, and those of us who are slightly left of center, like myself, <laughs> 10, I think Bitcoiners don't realize that there are a lot more of us than they think. Mm. <laughs> and, and I think that Interesting. there's, there's, um, there's an, uh, what, I, I'm not sure what the term of, if it's equity, maybe equitable, um, sort of a communal, communal sense. I find that the blockchain offers, the Bitcoin offers that people who are sort of rah, rah, private property, private rights, you know, gun rights, rah, rah, rah. They don't see the, the communal side of it. And to me, the communal side of it is that nobody really owns the blockchain. Um, it's, mm. it, it's, it's this beautiful um, technology that 
everyone has access to. Mm. And there's something that's so appealing to those of us who are idealists on the left mm. that is attractive. We don't necessarily, nice. for me, it's not necessarily about, you know, having the pie divided in equal parts. It's about having an invitation to the party, you know, like as a black woman, as an African, we never got an invite. We never got invited to the party before. And with Bitcoin, everyone's invited to the party. You may not get the same slice of pie and that's okay. You know, it's okay as long as you have access. That's really what the fight's about. The fight is about equal access. And as long as you have an internet connection, you have equal access, right? And you can have that inter internet connection. There are a lot of Africans, for example, who have smartphones, who have phones, who have access to the internet. Believe it or not, they're more than people think. And as long as you have that access, you can, you can have access to, to, to Bitcoin and you can buy a fraction of it. You can buy, you know, whatever you can afford, but at least there's no barrier to entry. The only barrier to entry I tell people is your curiosity. So if you're curious enough, you can learn and you can, you, you can, you know, uh, figure out how to buy it and, 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 and have access to this incredible, um, level playing field. It's the most level playing field I've ever experienced. And so I think that, that uh, Bitcoiners on the right don't see that aspect enough. Mm. They don't understand people that are on the left, what we see in Bitcoin, but mm. that's what we see in Bitcoin. We see, we see equal access. We see opportunity for, for people who've been, been excluded their whole mm. life. And, um, and we see it as a level playing field. And we're cool. here. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, hey, I was going to read something to you. So an uncle of mine on Facebook said three years ago, and he, I was reminded of it and I searched it just to, just to like remind myself. He said in big red writing, okay, he posted, imagine you and I agree that a napkin is worth $15,000. We transact. That's Bitcoin, except there is no napkin. Yeah, right. When I first heard Okay, that, that was also my a next stage for me that, that blew my mind. It's like, when I realized it was just input output, like there is no Bitcoin, like Bitcoins don't exist really. It's just, it's this, it's this sort of um, uh, abstract, you know, it's an app, it's an abstraction of value that we agree on. Mm. So I totally agree with your, like that's a hundred percent bang on. Yeah, I wasn't even sure where he was going with that, whether he was <laughs> saying Bitcoin is like revolutionary or whether he was saying it's worse than an invisible napkin. But um, anyways, I just thought I'd bring it up. You know, I think I think I agree. I, so by the way, I, but on to your point, I, I like your point about access and I, I truly believe it. And, you know, I, mean, so I was born in, well, we were born in the same city. So we were born, both born in Edmonton, but, but both of our parents, um, my parents are from Calcutta, which is like, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's like super poor. Like it's really, really hard times. Um, and you mentioned your, your father's from Tanzania, right? I'm yeah. just curious, like uh, any, do you, do you see uh, like Bitcoin maybe playing an important role in those parts of the world as well? Um, in terms of like, I don't know, in Africa, like lately I, I interviewed Pax full CEO, I like Ray a lot. He's um, he's cool. He's and he he he's very very passionate about Africa. You know, Jack Dorsey recently is like, okay, you know, Bitcoin Africa. But what is it? What, what do what are most people missing when it comes to I guess like the kind of the Bitcoin opportunity in Africa? You know, I mean, you might not know. I'm just curious. Like, do you get you know? Do you do you have an opinion on that? I do, and and mm. what I think is interesting, and not just in Africa. I think Bitcoin in general is that. Mm. I think the privileged, if you want to call us privileged, um, are now unbanking themselves. And the, the original uh, story of Bitcoin was to, to bank the unbanked. But in mm. fact, what Bitcoin is doing is it's unbanking the banked. Mm. And Africa is a little, it's kind of no different in that it's not as appealing to the people with nothing, like with, you know, with nothing, literally. Mm. It's appealing to the middle class, the educated people 
who don't trust their bank, don't trust the central, their central banks, don't trust their government, are hardworking, have their businesses, they travel, they perhaps their kids are abroad studying in school here. Those people are what, who are, who are interested in Bitcoin because they see it as a store of value that can mm. um, maintain their spending. You know, it's the, the, the value of their dollar, right? The spending, mm. spending power and um, resist inflation of their local currency. So the irony is that it's attracting upper middle class Africans. Interesting. Upper middle class Africans are the ones that are, you know, I, I can't remember what the trading volume is. I think I saw like $10 million a day in one small teeny tiny Nigerian <laughs> Nigerian exchange. It was like 10 million a day. Like what? <laughs> and I think there are eight exchanges in Nigeria now that serve just Nigeria, right? So so it's huge there. Um, and and so I think the irony is is that you're gonna have a class of technocrats, really, uh, global technocrats. And that kind of worries me a bit because I think that, that we are creating a new class, a global class of technocrats. And they are, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Like, and we're, I guess we are part, we're gonna be part of that. You know, are we, are we gonna be better than our, 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 our pre predecessors? Are we gonna, you know, are we gonna be worse? Are we gonna be as, you know, the same? Is anything gonna change? I think things will change. But, but it does worry me a bit that um, when I look at Bitcoin, I, I see there's like sort of a common thread of people that have, have enough money that they're, they're not like the desperate and destitute, right? Mm. So it's, it's like the inverse. And it's, I think it's in every country. <laughs> like, I don't think it's just North America where you've got people like Michael Saylor, perfect example, right? A billionaire who's like, okay, I get this now. So like, I'm going to buy as much Bitcoin as I can. And, and I think that there are a lot of other billionaires and millionaires who are thinking like Michael Saylor, but they're not public about it. You know, uh, he's public about it because he has no choice, right? He, he's a publicly traded company. We're going to find out anyway. So he just, he just is like, you know, let me be the bearer of the news and not uh, CNBC, right? I'm not going to hide anything. Um, but, I, but that kind of concerns me a bit is that, that the people who already have quite a bit are now like, you know, buying up the Bitcoin and, and perhaps maybe the people who really need it at the, at the, at the bottom of the, of the echelon, the social echelon or the ladder, uh, they have access to it, but for some reason it's not clicking in the same way. And maybe I'm naive too. Like I, I was speaking to a friend about this. He's like, you know, you can only hodl if you're not living paycheck to paycheck. And I was like, oh my God, I never even thought about that. Like, like, of course, like you can't hodl if you need the money to eat. You know what I mean? Like you can only hodl what you don't need mm. right, to survive. So it's like, how do we change that? And I don't know how we change that. Like, well, I, 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 I used to be a financial advisor, like, 20 years ago and um i've literally sat across the dinner table i want to say thousands of families okay and this was literally like what i used to do back like 2000 i think five or something like that was it that long ago i feel super old um but what i was gonna say is is that i learned that nobody out there knows how to manage their finances nobody like nobody and here's the reason Nobody teaches you. Your right? school doesn't teach you. Your parents don't teach you. Your brothers and sisters, your friends, like nobody teaches you. And so almost nobody. And money is like oxygen, right? Where it's like when you have it, you're cool. When you don't, it's like the end of the world. And, and now with a lot of the COVID stuff happening too, it's like it just breaks my heart because like what are people – you know, what are people doing? Cause it, it must be like for a lot of people who like their livelihoods have been, have been, you know, kind of damaged by a lot of the, the happenings. And so, so yeah, I, I do. I, it's just a crazy, crazy time, crazy, crazy time. And, and I do believe that Bitcoin offers a, a glimmer of hope in terms of like what could be and, 
And I think for all the reasons you mentioned, uh, I think, yeah. So, oh, okay. Um, anything else, I guess, on that? I think the contrarian question is good. Um, the other couple of just kind of small side note questions I ask, have you ever thought about, um, have you ever heard about universal basic income? Yes. Yes. Mm. And by the way, when I ask the question, I don't like, I don't automatically like agree or disagree. Like it's just a topic that I think is interesting um, and fascinating. And I love just people's kind of take on it, but like, what are your, what are your thoughts on, on it? And um, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, just, you know, I mean, in Canada, I think we're kind of going through a version of it or went through a version of it because of the whole pandemic, but um but I don't know, like, I also think like more long term in terms of like things like automation and, you know, the emergence of like AI and all this, like, like, what if, like, I mean, I'd love for people to just figure it out and just like, you know, truck drivers that are now replaced by Tesla trucks to, to, to become programmers that then become replaced by open AI bots that program by themselves like <laughs> my point is like when you see how much stuff is happening in tech like it is i think it's it's it's, it's at least worth thinking about like what happens if we're able to like let's say in the next 10 or 20 years completely automate away every job like including doctors including lawyers including programmers including everybody like what if that's feasible and you know what I mean? Like we move towards a world like that. What happens to humanity? We're just all going to be potentially like, you know what I mean? Like jobless. And what do we do in that case? And the idea of like governments, obviously, um, you know, inflating their money supply and essentially taxing or stealing money from people and giving it to others doesn't sit well with me. So, so I wonder, you know, can Bitcoin and blockchain someday address some of these like major uh, challenges that maybe are ahead of us? Have you thought about that? It can. I, mm. and, I, and I see both sides of the argument. I, I mm. understand where people are saying, well, UBI, UBI doesn't can't work because then we'll have inflation and your money won't be worth anything. Like people will just raise the prices of things, mm. right? So your thousand or I don't know, two thousand dollars a month won't be able to buy you much anyway because mm -hmm. the prices will go up because people will just say, oh, people are getting two thousand dollars extra so let me just raise my prices so there's that argument that it won't work for that reason but then there's the flip side there's, there's the other argument that people will spend their money mm. right most people will spend it and 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 it goes it will go back into the economy and i'm actually I, i'd be fascinated to find out if the if canadians who got their two thousand dollars versus americans who got twelve hundred dollars i think one time It'd be interesting to see what the effects of, effects of us getting our like two thousand dollars or whatever it was. Yeah, I think it was two thousand uh, versus people who got the one time in the states, and if that made a difference in the economies. Like, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. as am I. As am I. Um, mm -hmm. so, and, and many countries didn't even do anything, right? Actually, most European countries did. It's it's the U.S. that only had the one time one hundred uh, twelve hundred. Mm. And now they're giving, I think, two thousand. The the yeah. they just passed something for two thousand for. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm not for like handouts and this and that. But I mean, yeah. in a time like that, when you're literally being forced, yeah. you know, to not even operate your business, this that, like, I just don't see how um, people are supposed to function otherwise, right? Um, However, I do want to add something because mm. I do think that Bitcoiners don't talk about this enough. So mm. let's say we had UBI and the government mm. said, you know what, we're going to distribute Bitcoin. We're going to use Bitcoin. We're going to use like the technology to give everybody a thousand dollars UBI. In Bitcoin. In, in, in Bitcoin. We're yeah. Use Bitcoin. Okay. Talk to me. Talk to me. Okay. And if they do that, but they will be able to trace everything. And I, I sometimes wonder if we will head into a dystopia if you disagree with the government or mm. something something happens, I don't know, where you where where they have they feel like they have to cut you off. And that's what they do. They just turn off your account. And everywhere that accepts Bitcoin, mm. you're you're shut out 
you know, kind of like in the movies, right? Where you got to go underground. <laughs> because, I mean, like, I don't think what you're talking about is th- that, um, you know, far out or, I mean, it is like, if you look at what's happening with the FATF regulatory framework and, you know, uh, Brian Armstrong's recent comments about it and, you know, kind of the, the, all the framework, right. That's coming out with the, how you have to identify self-hosted, <laughs> self-hosted wallets. It's like a Bitcoin wallet, but yeah, but anyways, how these self-hosted wallets are supposedly, you know, so I mean, I, I do, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think, I think it can lead to a dystopian future. Um, what gives me solace or some comfort is that Bitcoin is open source and, you know what I mean? It's governed by a global group of, you know, freedom loving people, ideally. And so if it is to maintain its relevancy, you'd think that, you know, I, I know CoinJoin and all these other things are out there. Um, but, you know, other other cryptos have also laid a bit of a framework to show how privacy can be done. Um, so, so maybe, so I, I think privacy is kind of a big topic and it's not really front and center yet, but I think it should be, and it should be something that people talk more about. And it's not even about evasion or getting away. It's about like, if you're a public company or whatever, a private company, you don't want people to know how many Bitcoin you have, or you don't want your neighbor to know, like you just want to, you, a lot of very, very wealthy people don't want people to know that they are. And so, um, so I think, so I think there's a lot of, a lot of kind of work to be done still on that front. It's coming though, because mm. I think the the, the tap route um, mm. coming right that yeah. offers privacy, and so does I think it's what's yeah. it the snore. Exactly. So I think I think I think it, you know it, it'll be like traceable, 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 and then one day, uh oh, it's untraceable or something like that. <laughs> You know, because like I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of almost think that it's like it's traceability is not such a bad thing because um, because see, look, like the way I look at it, this whole freaking thing is one grand experiment. And if I had to pick Nako, the one like because I see a lot of things that don't make sense in the world. But if I had to pick one thing that when I'm like 80 that I'm like, okay, we at least got rid of that one thing. It's inflation right it's inflation so i agree taxation is bad and i'm not even in agreement with it i do pay my taxes by the way i have i hire accountants so if anyone's hearing out there i do hire accountants and i pay my taxes every year but do i agree with the notion of taxes that's maybe for another podcast uh but but you know philosophically i have a very hard time um morally coming to the conclusion that that you know that, that somehow it's okay that were allowed to just, you know, walk into people's homes with guns and take half their money just because. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, but, but okay. So, um, so I think on Ubi though, we're, you know, so, so, okay. I was going to say, you know, a lot of governments like Silk Road, right. Um, with uh, even in Canada and in India, there's been a lot of like hackers where the government confiscates, you know, from bad guys, let's say like legitimate bad guys right because there is like there are bad guys out there oh yeah um and let's say they confiscate man if they just even kept all that bitcoin and just said okay we're gonna just lock it in for 10 years and after 10 years we're gonna airdrop a little bit of satoshi to everybody <gasps> i'm game like like someone should come up with a plan like that right it's like let's at least let's let's at least figure out some sort of ubi where it's not printed out of air where maybe we use that printed out of air money to buy actual Bitcoin in the free market or mine it or whatever. And central banks hold it on their reserves and we give it to our people and, and, you know, and solve this, this, this evil thing called inflation. I, I'm not a big fan of it. And I think it's like, it's like taxation, at least it's like in your face and you got to like sit there and do it. But inflation, well, it's, it's it doesn't even show up in the math. And that's what's like, oh, they just, it's so yeah. sneaky. It's so sneaky. And it's like, no, I, I'm, I'm not going to have it. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to have it. Okay. What, what else is, uh, where do people learn more about you? Find out more about, you know, I guess just in general speaking, your, like your websites and all that kind of stuff. I want to, I want to, I wanna, uh, oh, there's a couple more things I want to talk to you about, just like random things, but, uh, sure. but yeah, but I want to make sure I capture the important stuff. Yeah, so my website is fintechrecruiters.com. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, you can just- Are you on Twitter now? A little bit? I'm on Twitter. So you can also reach me. My name is at Nako Mbele. So my last name is M-B-E-L-L-E. And my first is N-A-K-O. So it's at Nako Mbele, all one word on Twitter. Um, 
yeah so that's where you can find me and you can also my email address should be i'm also on linkedin uh, cool. so you can connect with me on linkedin as well awesome awesome hey i was gonna ask you um one thing have you ever heard of a guy named manny pacquiao have you ever heard of a guy named manny pacquiao he sounds that sounds familiar his name sounds familiar he, i just okay so it's kind of embarrassing because like i'm all into like mma and stuff like that but i, I i'd always known filipino about dude, manny right? a, huh? a filipino guy Is he he's filipino? a filipino guy yeah yeah, okay. He's a Filipino guy that was literally born into like the most like <laughs> like the worst like poverty story you've ever heard, right? Like, I think he had to like run away from home because his dad killed his dog or something <laughs> to eat it or something like that. Like, I mean, like he literally like like water was like his food like most days. Like it was he had a really really tough um kind of like childhood or whatever. Lived on the streets. And went on to become like this, like insanely, like dominant boxer, like quite possibly one of the best boxers ever. Like he literally demolished. I watched a fight yesterday where he demolished De La Hoya, who's like, you know, oh, supposedly really? like oh, a god, he's right? Fighting? He's still fighting? How old is De La Hoya? Yeah, right. Well, no, he, not anymore. Manny took him out of, you know, yeah. I think it was ten years ago. But but oh, what okay. I found fascinating about him is is that this guy has decided to, he's made half a billion dollars over his career and has given away like the majority of it, like 300 or $400 million. He's given away to the poor. There's like pictures of him literally, like when he gets paid, he's on the side of the street. There's like a lineup of people, him just handing money to everyone. Like when some natural disaster hit, he built like a thousand homes. I mean, he's now, I think a Senator or something in the Philippines and aims wow. to be like the prime minister or president. And, um, I don't know. Something about his story was like really inspiring. I don't know. I just kind of like brought it up because I, I, I've been thinking about it a lot over the last few days. And um, I just think, you know, like humans are possible. They're, 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 they're able to do so much. And, and uh, it just amazes me. It just amazes me, you know. And, and I think Bitcoin is like maybe one example of that. And, and things like boxing and MMA to me, it's like the only thing that's like kind of like what we do. <laughs> like getting punched in the face is kind of like what we do every day <laughs> hey Nako I lost you sorry I think I lost your audio oh hello uh oh let me pause this okay, okay, okay I'm back I'm back I got you back here okay yeah continue sorry you were saying something yeah it's funny that you mentioned that because I also really like boxing um I've been watching it years though. I used to watch it when my ex, when I was with my ex because he was huge into boxing. So that's why I was like, Manny, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. He was like the pride of Philip the Philippines. I mean that's they, what they call um, him. Yes. Yeah. 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 We really love him. But cancel culture tried to cancel him. You can Google why. Oh, I did. I did <laughs> hear about day. that recently. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, he, cancel culture. They tried to cancel everybody. But um, because I think he he misspoke. I don't think he meant it, what he said, but he, he, he misspoke and, and people really went after him. Hey, Nako, I lost you again. Hey, Nako, it might actually be me. That? It might be my Did internet. You? It might be my internet. Sorry, I don't know. I got to figure this out. I got to get this thing hardwired. I'm, it's so embarrassing. I'm like a no, techie no, guy no, and I'm like it. leaning it on Wi-Fi here to do Zoom calls, thinking, huh? I don't know. Um, no, I think it just told me I was unstable. But hey, Nakula, you know, this has been like a really great call. Uh, hey, can you still hear me? Well, we were wrapping up anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you, you paused into pause land here. Uh, let, me, let me pause it one more time. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to bring it back. We're back now. We're recording. Do you want to close up with any comments? I mean, we've done most of it. I kind of babbled on a little bit near the end, but. Uh, oh, okay. I can, I, I, if you don't mind me plugging a project that I'm Plug away, on. plug away. I'll okay. just delete it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Bitcoin related. So okay, hey, then then it's staying in. Yeah. So it's it's um I'm I'm building um a stacks. It's on the block stack ecosystem. It's um it it our the the block stack blockchain is tethered to Bitcoin. So the block stack community realizes that Bitcoin is king. They're not going to compete with Bitcoin in, in for money, for currency. 
which other blockchains are doing. Instead, Stax really cares about privacy and digital identity rights. So, so a lot of the, the, for example, if you're on Facebook or Twitter even, right, you can't take all of your tweets and all of your content from Facebook or Twitter with you if you migrate. It belongs to them. So Blockstack is, um, uh, is the proposition to the marketplaces. Like, how do you feel about leaving all of that work that you've built, whether it's YouTube, right? What you're doing right now this is a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. It should be yours. It should belong to you. You should be able to take it with you when you decide to, to, to leave, if you decide to leave YouTube. And you can't do that now. You don't own the digital rights to that right? It belongs to YouTube. So we're building a platform that allows people to have decentralized uh, data that they own. So it's about digital identity rights. It's about privacy as well. And I'm building um, a staking pool service on this ecosystem, in, in this ecosystem, and in order to help it grow, because I, I, I care about privacy and I care about digital identity rights. Now, what the reason that it's so special is that it, it uses Bitcoin as a security layer and it, and it um, is connected to Bitcoin. So that we actually pay out the staking uh, reward in Bitcoin. So you can actually earn Bitcoin if you stake a certain number, the, the number is zero point, uh, what is it? Point zero two five percent of this liquid supply. If you have that amount of stacks and you stake it, you will earn Bitcoin as a result. And so what I'm doing is creating a service and a platform for people who don't have that much because uh, a lot of people have like something like 10,000 stacks. So if you have 10,000 10, stack tokens, you can join my pool. We'll pool our stacks together. You'll pool it with other stack holders and you'll be able to earn In order to compete, so same concept. Uh, I'll be launching the the Stacks blockchain is launching January fourteenth. If you know this is this is uh, crypto, so if it if it launches later than that, it's because we're not ready. Okay, so uh, but but we're looking at that as a as a launch date, and my my service will also launch at that time. Uh, you can, you can, for more information, you can go to stacks, stacked sats, which is S T A C K E D S A T S. Cause we are paying out Satoshi. So we are building, you know, one of the people or one of the teams that are building on top of a blockchain, uh, Bitcoin, we believe Bitcoin is, is going to be the standard across the ecosystem. And is it a side chain or something that go? I, sorry, I should know, but yeah, that, you know? That's, yeah, that, that's a really, you know, it's hard to describe it as a side chain. It's not really a side chain because it has its own protocol, right? So the protocol that they use, it's actually brilliant. It's called proof of transfer. And the reason it's called proof of transfer is the stacks nodes are similar to Bitcoin nodes, you know, thing to validate transactions you're able to look up, you know, your own transactions. You don't need to go to a separate explorer to see if the transaction went through. You are your own validator, right? But you're not paid. <laughs> the only people that are paid are the miners, okay? We do it because, you know, we want to make sure that, that, the, that, that the, the network is secure. We want to uh, further decentralization. What Stax has done is they said, okay, we're going to actually reward our nodes. We're going to reward the stacking nodes for helping us secure the blockchain and for helping us decentralize the blockchain. However, instead of using tokens to stake and mint new, new tokens, because that's how staking works, right? Other staking platforms, you need a certain number of tokens in order to become a miner, right? Let's call them miners. In order to mint new tokens, you need to buy a certain amount of tokens, stake them, 
and then you have a stake in the network. And that's how you mine the blocks, right? By the number of, of, um, of, of, of uh, what do you call it? Tokens that you have. With, with stacks, we're using Bitcoin. So as miners, as stacks miners, think of us on the left side of the equation and then the nodes are on the right side. So if you're a miner, a stacks miner, you are going to commit Bitcoin. Bitcoin replaces the machines in proof of work and it replaces the tokens in proof of stake. So it's like a combination. And, and, and if you look at the whole system as an energy network, which is Michael Saylor's, you know, that's how he describes it. And I, I love that analogy because that's really what it is. And money is energy at the end of the day, right? You're, 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 um, you're trading your, your, your life force, if you want to call it that. You're tra trading your labor. You're trading your, your time. This is all energy. So the energy that, um, that we use to, jet, to power our, 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 our blockchain, uh, we, use, we use Bitcoin instead of machines. And we use Bitcoin instead of our own tokens in order to mint new stacks tokens. So we commit, so we, so we put up this Bitcoin. Let's say we, we have one Bitcoin that represents like a mining farm, okay? And let's say that, that mining farm commits 200,000 Satoshis to mine a block. That 200,000 Satoshis it takes to mine a block, we will get rewarded stacks tokens as miners. We get stacks tokens. However, we transfer instead of burning that 200,000 Satoshis to mint new Stacks tokens, we transfer that energy of Satoshis to the stackers on the right side of the equation. So none of the energy is lost, okay? It's transferred. And, and the Stacks token, each miner gets a thousand Stacks tokens uh, for, for participating in this, you know? And it's similar to Bitcoin, right? It's 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 a uh, it's random. However, the 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 more satoshis that you that you commit to burn a block, the higher your probability of probably winning that block. But it's not guaranteed. You know, it's it's again, it's like Bitcoin, right? You you can have the biggest mining farm, but you're not going to win every single time. You know, it it, it takes it, it's a probability uh, equation. Does that make sense? It's, it's, a little bit, yeah. I'm also reading on there. Is it black a black block stack dot org? Is that their website? Block stack dot org. Yeah, you know, I've heard about these guys. I'll be honest, I don't know enough about them. It's probably kind of embarrassing, but I, I'm definitely going to read more about them. And I try to maintain an open mind about everything. And, and especially, I mean, it sounds interesting, but uh, yeah, people should do their own research, obviously, and maybe learn more about it at, at uh, block stack dot org. Uh, okay, anything. And my website yes. is stack, stack, stack sats dot, 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 com. dot com. There you go. Stacked sats dot com. Okay, cool. Cool. And uh, yeah, you've already shared your Twitter. So if people want to learn more about it, they can, you know, reach out. And uh, I think that was great. I mean, we're almost at the 90 minute mark here. We can maybe bring it to an end if there isn't uh, anything else. I, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I, I just want to say to people, listen, man, if I can figure this out, okay. Mm. If I can figure out this this space as well as the technology be patient with yourself you're not going to get it overnight but but people like me should give you hope because i'm not technical i'm not an engineer i'm not a finance person i'm a regular person who just took the time to learn and understand it and now i'm hooked and i'm and i boom yeah so there's hope yeah, if you feel like, oh my God, I don't get Bitcoin, I don't understand exactly. it. Exactly. It takes some time. Yeah, my oh. goal is actually to to not interview the Michael Saylors of the world. Cause they're too eloquent. He's too good looking. You know what I mean? Like it's people like us. <laughs> I think I don't know, but I, I'm kind of being just again cheeky, but um, no, but I, I but you know it's like I, there's people. I mean, I think he admittedly said I think even if you had asked him in February, he would have said for never, and then by March because the conditions changed. But yes. it's the people like you that have been doing all the work, right? Like I mean, you're literally helping guys like or teams like Casa and Lightning 
hire people and build like the infrastructure and da, 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 da. So in my eyes, these are the people that need all the recognition and shine. So, so, so my podcast kind of focused on, you know, the builders, if you will, the builders in the space. And, uh, you know, I'll leave Michael Saylor to the other, the pomps of the world. <laughs> but we love him. He's awesome. Oh my I God. know. <laughs> He's, He's too awesome. good. <laughs> He's so good at like capturing exactly the essence of Bitcoin. Mm, so he should be a poet or something. I right? mean, it sounds like he's more like a poet than he is uh, anything else. Metaphors. Yeah, I'm just kidding. He, I love, I love everything he says. It's super yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's banned. He's banned from this show. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, no. Um, yeah, no. He's. Uh, no, I, I'm even trying to get Raul Paul. Maybe I'll try and get him on the show, and maybe we'll work our way up to Michael someday. Lots of connections. You can. You can get anybody on your show. I had Max. My first one was Max Kaiser. Like I, that's a guy. I mean, he's not as he. He's maybe not the most eloquent poet, but that guy's also a poet, man. He's been dropping gems since yes. 2011. Like 2011, everyone thought he was a crazy kook, but the stuff he says makes sense. And so, so anyway, so I had Max on and so I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could be. And, and the thing is he's from the other, like he played for the other team. Do you know what mm. I mean? When you've got somebody like that that's saying, hey, listen, like this is how things work. Like he knows the game, you know, cause he played it, right? Yeah. So you gotta pay attention when people like that say things because they know exactly they know exactly what's going on the inside and, and, and you know like recently i've been having so oh yeah i was gonna say one thing is that bitcoin has helped me to reconnect with old friends more than facebook because of bitcoin's price i get more friends from 20 years ago being oh like dude i'm probably late to the party but you know let's talk so people who think that they're late to the party what do you say to them no, it's still so early. Oh it's early, gosh. right? <laughs> early. Yeah, I interviewed developers because, you know, I, I'm, I'm also reaching out to people who are not yeah. in the space and I'm really super smart people. Mm. Thing. I'm like, what do you mean you're not like, you don't have Bitcoin yet? Like, or they are <laughs> still skeptical. Like what do like what? So I so sometimes I a, 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 every every week for the last three weeks, I've been on, I, I live mostly on Twitter because I always felt like Facebook was a place where they're like the people that I know out of chance. You know what I mean? Like my parents, I, it was by chance I was kind of born here. I mean, it was their choice, but it was by chance that they were my parents or my friends or my friends because they're my friends by chance. I happen to be born in Edmonton. And, but Twitter gave me the ability to connect with people through choice. You know what I mean? Like it, it allowed me to be like, I think Jack Dorsey is like a top notch thinker. I'm going to follow him. I think Rodolfo Novak, you know, is a, I'm going to follow him. And it gave me this like universe of like people who I kind of like aligned with and looked up to, as opposed to just people who came into my life by chance. And so lately I've been going on a Facebook every week because like the price every day, a new high, new high. I'm sure a lot of people in my circle are probably like, what the heck's going on? So I've been like, okay, if people want me to do like a Facebook live session with like everyone on Facebook, I'll do it like on Friday, right? Or whatever. But I'll be honest, I don't really feel the love. Like it's just, I get like, you know, 10, 20 likes. I'm like, you know what? It's all good. I'm not going to waste my time. I got better things to do on a Friday. But I was a bit surprised. And But every week I keep keep writing it. I'm like, if anyone wants to know for free, I will for free just like, like answer questions. Um, but so that, that, that tells me that I think people are, most people are still on the sidelines. We're probably seeing a bit of a phenomenon here with some public companies and some, you know, hedge funds, but I think the masses are, are still sleeping at the wheel. They are, they're still sleeping and, and even really smart, smart people, I think. Oh yeah. It's kind of like, even on Twitter, you can kind of see it, right? There's still some really dumb tweets, like. Like, <laughs> like the, the pie one, have you seen that recent right? one? <laughs> The, the 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 indivisible it's it's hilarious it's, it's like wow anyway, yeah bitcoin is so not bitcoin's limited or what is people say bitcoin isn't limited scary. because you can scary. divide it in, infinitely yeah. it's like you can divide a pie infinitely but there's only so much pie 
anyway, okay, now I'm kind of just going off and having too much fun here. Uh, people are probably gonna be like, where are we, you know, give us some education. So there you go. It's not all about education. It's about having fun. Well, you know what? Like I always say, people in Bitcoin, even if I don't really know them, I, once we talk, it's like, I feel like we've known each other forever. So similar feeling, um, nothing but love. So Nako, thanks for coming to the events way back in the day. Thanks for building a business and helping other business. Thanks for dropping bombs, you know, mic drops one after another. This has been excellent. So this one actually might be airing on the 31st. So hopefully people will enjoy this one before the new year. All right. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. And thanks take for it. all you do and all you've done. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah thank you for coming and yeah all right cool we'll we'll bring it to an end and, and if people do are hearing this on the 31st they should have a really really good new year they should just you know be present enjoy whatever we do have here and uh 2021 is gonna be awesome take care bye-bye i'm gonna kill it here <laughs>